So we just learned how to basically create a REST API and return some data to a user who makes a request, right? So what I want to do, the next steps that I think we should kind of talk about is how do we actually have this data, like this array, come from something called a database, right? We talked about what a database is at the very start of the series. It's just a, a place that you can store data and then later retrieve the data. So having all this hard coded is cool for now. But if down the road you wanted like an admin dashboard where you can come in and dynamically edit or create new posts, we're kind of out of luck, right? Because we hard coded everything. So that is why we probably want to use a database. And in this series, I'm going to be showing you Mongo, but these same principles kind of apply to SQL or whatever you want to use. It's just a place that you can store data and retrieve it. So let's look at Mongo and see how we can kind of get this set up. So if we go to MongoDB, I think you can kind of just follow the tutorial that they will have for you. Uh, let's see. Um, I would probably just go to like install Mongo um, and you'll find the installation and then find out whatever your operating system is. There probably is some documentation that tells you how to get MongoDB running. I'm not going to walk you through this because um, I think that many people are watching on different operating systems, Mac, Windows, Linux, and it would take me a long time to walk you through that. So what I recommend you doing, find the tutorial that's going to work for you, run through it, and then after you have it all set up, you should be able to go into a terminal window. And let me just kind of test to make sure this works. If you go into a terminal window and you type Mongo, you should see a Mongo shell spin up, right? So this is a tool that you can use to kind of connect to your MongoDB database and verify that it's running. Um, and you can also type in show collections if you want to kind of like show all the databases that exist. Right, I think it's called show DBs or something. Yes, yeah, show DBs. So you see here I have a bunch of like random uh, Mongo DB databases locally on my laptop. I'm not really using any of these, but what we're going to be doing is installing a node package. Remember NPM we talked about. We're going to install a dependency which is going to basically create the database for us and more specifically create something called a collection. So, so in most database systems, you have the ability to create multiple different databases for different applications. And inside each database, you can create something called like tables if you're using SQL. But since we're using MongoDB, there's something called collections, right? If you type in use and then type in the name of the database, so use to do's, you'll see that it prints out switch to DB to do. And then you can say show collections to kind of list out the different collections that we have on that database inside of MongoDB, right? So you can have like a MongoDB hosting of many different applications. I'm not sure you would want to do that in production. You probably just want to have it isolated. And then inside of each database, you can have like different collections, which is used for storing different data, right? So you could have like users that are stored in one collection. You could have posts that are stored in one collection, which we're probably going to do here in this tutorial. So just keep that in mind. Um, another cool thing about the MongoDB shell is that you can actually query and store data directly from your terminal down here, right? So if you ever need to like get into the data and actually do a query and find some data, you can do it in the shell. There's probably other tools as well that you can use in your, your browser and just connect to your database and do whatever commands you want to it. But we're going to try to keep this as simple as possible in this tutorial. All right, so let's just go and try to get this going. So I haven't really prepared too much about getting this set up with Mongo. So there is a MongoDB driver, which you can use. Um, a lot of people use something called Mongoose, which is like a wrapper around um, the MongoDB client to allow you to do like models and stuff. But we're going to try to keep this simple and just use the MongoDB package. All right, so if you follow this tutorial on MongoDB, you can just install this package like we did before on other tutorials. So let's just go ahead and run that command and that should install our MongoDB package. And then usually there's always a snippet of code that you can use to get started. So if you just keep scrolling down, you will see a snippet of code. So for right now, we're going to keep this as simple as possible and put this all into one file. Um, but as you get more experienced and your application grows, you're probably going to put this in a different file. So let's just put it right at the top of our server JS file and kind of build from it from there. All right, let's just try to walk through this code and make sure we understand it, right? So we require a MongoDB module, the one we just installed, and we're grabbing a Mongo client from that object. 
And then what we want to do is let's get rid of a search. We don't care about this stuff. So DB name is going to be the name of our database. Let's just call it like blog, I guess. And you can basically connect to your MongoDB server that's running locally on your laptop if you have it set up and running like we checked earlier. And more specifically, we can create a MongoDB client object, okay? I don't think we want to call it close here. Let's do a couple of uh, refactoring to get this more familiar. All right, so what I also want to do is I want to pull this database object out. I'm going to say let DB is equal to null. And we are going to set that or initialize it here. So what this does is we're going to connect to our MongoDB database. And then we are going to basically connect to a, a database called blog, which I don't think we've created yet. But once you've done this, you now have an object called DB that you can use in your application for fetching and retrieving posts. Um, technically, you probably don't want to start your application until you have this defined. So what I'm going to do is just run this code up here. And I'm going to run all this down below. All right, so we're going to connect the Mongo first. If everything was successful, then we're going to start our REST API and on port 3000. So at this point, let's just try to run our server and see what happens. I don't think we've created that, that table yet, so we might get an error. But let's just print out the error and see what happens, right? It's always good to experiment when you're learning how to code because that is like one of the best ways to learn. So there's no errors except for this use unified topology error. Um, I'm not sure how to address that really. I'll be honest with you, I'm not a MongoDB expert, but Mongo is a good database to kind of learn how to build out applications. Because it's really easy to just store JSON objects and retrieve them versus having to learn like a SQL language or learn an ORM or something like that. So I don't know, let's just see if this works. What we actually want to do is we're going to cancel the server and I'm going to load up that Mongo DB client, right? So type in Mongo and that should allow us to write some commands. And I'm going to go ahead and say show DBs and we don't have one called blog. Oh, we do have one called blog. So let me actually, um, all right. So we are actually going to use the name of full stack blog instead of blog. And I'm going to load up the client here. So I'll type in Mongo and then I'm going to say use full stack blog. And that should switch us over to the database. And then if you follow like some commands of this tutorial, you can start inserting data, right? So I can say db dot and then name a name of collection that I want. So in our case, we can say like posts. And then I could say insert and then I could put like some post data here. So I could say like just using JSON, I could say um, title is hello world description is by and then image let's just hard code that as well to dot slash images slash javascript dot jpeg and i think if we run this it'll print out write result in insert one so that means that the data that we tried to write was successfully inserted and then if you want to actually get that back you can say db dot your collection, which is posts. And then I think I can say find and just pass it like empty curly braces. And you'll see that we get back one entry that has that exact data that we're looking for. Okay, so that's how you do it in the shell in the terminal. And I think it's good to kind of understand how to use the shell. But we actually want to do it in our JavaScript code um, so that we don't have to run it in the shell, right? So what you can do is inside this readme, Always look through the docs. This is how you learn how to code. You have to read through docs. Just the unfortunate truth of learning the code. You can actually grab a collection, right? So instead of doing all of this code, we want to actually kind of replace it with grabbing the connection or grabbing the collection and sending that back to the user, okay? So if you remember here, we have a posts endpoint that calls a callback function. And we can say const collection is equal to db collection of. Instead of documents, we need to put posts. Now, the reason we do posts is because that is what I decided to name it when I did a DB posts insert. This will automatically create the collection if it doesn't already exist. So this will give us the collection, and then we could actually do a find to array call here. So I'll just call this and just copy code because that is the best way to start learning. So I'm going to copy the code, and I'm going to just kind of refactor this a little bit to make it a fat arrow. And instead of docs here, I'm going to put posts, right? This is just any variable that you want. 
Remember that this is just a arbitrary callback function that takes in two arguments. The first one happens to be any errors, if there were any. And then the second one is the actual collection, the array of posts that happen to exist in the database. And I think to array is just a helper method that you have to run to get the actual like raw array. So it's just something that you need to understand when you're using this MongoDB library. If you're using a package called Mongoose, it's going to be a little bit different. So just keep that in mind. So let us kind of analyze this, right? We hit the endpoint slash posts. We get all the posts or we get the post collection. And then we're telling our code to basically find every post that's in that collection. And then we should get back the posts in an array here. And what we need to do, if you can connect the dots in your head, we need to send that back to the user who's making the request, right? So we can say res dot JSON, and then we'll say posts. So let's verify this. I'm not entirely confident it's going to work, but let's start our server first to make sure the server's running. And I'm gonna go ahead and go to localhost 3000 slash posts. And I'm actually impressed that that worked with no bugs. So now we actually have an endpoint that is fetching data from a Mongo server running on our computer. We actually inserted some data into that full stack blog database that we created inside a posts collection, all right? So I did that manually, but down the road, we're actually gonna have an endpoint that's gonna insert data into the database for us if they were to do a post request to our endpoint here. So with that all being said and done, if I go back to my app and I click refresh, is that pretty cool? So the full stack process has actually just happened in this tutorial. I don't know if I did a, full, a good job explaining all this stuff. I kind of copied and pasted code in and refactored code. And sorry if I kind of went too fast, but the whole process has been done, right? From the front end to the back end to the database, we are basically telling the front end to do a request to our back end. The back end is going to fetch some data from the database and return that back to the front end. And then we dynamically render that data out. So if I can go here, I can actually load up another command prompt here. And just to show you like what we're doing, if I lo load up the Mongo shell and I say use full stack a blog, and then I say db.post.insert, and I want to insert another post here. Um, we could just, what should we name this? Let's do title is JavaScript. Uh, description is hello world. And what was the last one? Image. So image was like, I don't know what images we have hard coded here. In the future, you probably don't want to hard code images. You might want to actually store those in a database. I could say react.png. So I think it's slash images slash react.png. So if I insert this, we actually get an error because I have a syntax error. So let's kind of go through here. I probably forgot to end a quote or something. Yeah, so after JavaScript, that should have been a comma. I put a colon. There we go. So now we insert it, and if we refresh the page, we now get back two posts. Cool, so that's all I really wanted to show you in this video. I just wanted to show you a quick way to integrate our backend with MongoDB. I apologize for not showing you how to set up MongoDB locally, but I, I believe in your skills. I believe that you can follow a tutorial. Go to MongoDB install and type in Windows if you want, and go to the first link that comes up. And I guarantee you, they're going to tell you exactly what you need to do. It's probably just like double clicking MSI and installing it or something and clicking next, 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 next. But once you have it set up and running and whatever permissions you have to set up with like running in admin mode or something, you should hopefully be able to follow the same stuff that I did in this video. All right. So now I think it's just a matter of continuing this process, right? We need to keep on making endpoints, making new pages that can post data. And I think what we need to do now is make like an admin page where you can go in from a UI in the browser and actually do a post request and send over a post that you want to put in our blog. 